Good morning and welcome to worship here at Highlands United Methodist Church. We've just entered into the 10 o'clock hour here on Sunday morning, October the 18th. If you're joining us now in this moment, we welcome you. If you are worshiping with us at some other time, we are thrilled to have you with us as we seek to worship God in spirit and in truth. On this Laity Sunday, we celebrate the gift and the good work of the laity within the life of the church. And certainly we are blessed here at Highlands United Methodist Church with so many gifted and committed laity. And so on this very special day, we honor you. I'm Randy Lucas. I'm the pastor of the church. It is my honor to be with you here this morning along with our worship team. We have Les Scott, who is our minister of music. We also have with us this morning Becky Jacobs and Bailey Baker, who will be joining us in the singing, Sherry Bruner at the piano, Christine Murphy, our director of children and youth ministries. She'll be giving us the message this morning as she shares something about her faith journey and God's work in her life. So we very much look forward to that. Mike Murphy, of course, on the controls this morning as our producer wants again, and we're delighted to have Elizabeth Gordon with us, who is up there with Mike as well this morning. With that, that is our worship team here today, and again, we're glad to have you with us this morning as we gather in worship. Let's take just a few moments now and collect our thoughts and our hearts and our minds, and let's catch our breath perhaps a bit this morning as Sherry plays some centering music as we prepare our hearts for worship. Would you join us now singing at home as the band leads us in I Surrender All.
So we're going to pause for just a moment right now. It is Laity Sunday, and I want to take just a couple of moments and share with our lay leader, Patty Mashuris. You know, Patty, this is a, a special day for us in the life of the church. Uh, in just a little bit, uh, Christine will share with us something of her faith story and how God is working in her life. And, you know, as I think about that, I think about how uh, the church is that vehicle through which God uh, uses to nurture and to care for folks in our faith. And and HUMC has been so blessed over the years to have so many uh, great leaders that have come from the life of the church, have been nurtured in the life of the church. You know, in your role as the lay leader, uh, you certainly have seen that. You are one of those examples, and you have mm-hmm. seen people who have just given up so much of their time and talent. So I'm just going to ask you as the lay leader of the church just to reflect a little bit on uh, how you have seen the laity involved and in providing leadership and support for ministry in the church over the years. It's been, it's been amazing. Um, we have so many people that give so much time in our church and who support one another, I think, is the most important thing. It's, um, it's unbelievable how we just step up and embrace each other and just help with the journey. And so many, it's amazing because people don't even realize the gifts they have. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, it just like it's like magic, but it, we know it's God working. You know, it's you can just feel it all coming together. And I it think crumbles when it's not meant to be. But <laughs> I think that's a great point that you make uh, that we don't always understand or recognize our own gifts. And I do mm-hmm. think that's one of the things that the church can help us to do is to uh, claim that the gifts that we have. And so oftentimes people receive encouragement. People see gifts in us Mm -hmm. that we don't see in ourselves. And, and I would imagine you would be a good example of that as well. I think uh, you have been thrust into leadership roles that you might not would have identified uh, you as having specific gifts, but the church has certainly seen those gifts and we've been blessed by your gifts. So I want to celebrate that Mm -hmm. even as I'm talking with you, but with, with that, is that consistent with your own understanding that oftentimes we help one another to, to claim and to utilize our gifts? Absolutely. I've been told over the years that, that I could, that I should be in leadership or I've been um, advocate uh, has been mentioned for me. And I, I said, not me. There's no way, <laughs> no way that I can do that. But I seem to keep going along, and everybody supports me. That's what makes it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and you've mentioned support a couple of times, and I think that's a, and that's kind of a great place to maybe bring this to a close, our brief conversation yeah. on this Laity Sunday. Uh, you certainly have named experiencing that and seeing that and, and being, uh, you know, I would name you as a vehicle for that support as well. Mm-hmm. And so as we celebrate the laity on this Laity Sunday, maybe that's a, a good thing for us all to reflect upon, how we have been supported in ministry and how God can use us to be a support for one another. Is that a good place to end? Mm -hmm. That's a great place to end. I mean, we could probably go on forever, but because of the, you know, it's just amazing the people and their gifts in our community of faith. But um, yes, I think that's perfect. And I support Christine. I know we all do 100%. So that's a, it's just such a joyful and blessed time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we'll look forward to her reflections and her sermon uh, that she'll be preaching for us and sharing with us here in just a little bit in our worship service. And so just a a final word, Patty, thank you for being an effective Mm -hmm. and faithful and supportive lay leader at Highlands United Methodist Church. We all appreciate you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I have enjoyed it so much.
as we enter into our time of spoken prayer this morning, we will have a few minutes to listen to the band and to center our hearts and our minds. Let us pray. Lord, we come together today to worship with thanksgiving and praise. Many of us have come to this place with burdens, seeking your healing. Other has, others have come with joys, celebrating the goodness and blessings that abound. Each one is welcome here. We know that there is much work to be done in this world, injustice, greed, isolation, alienation, they all exist when we have forgotten to be your people of peace. Help us to remember to be faithfully working for you in all that we do. You have placed your imprint on us and challenged us to be your people in thought, word, and deed. We come to you today concerned about so many of our friends, our brothers and sisters in Christ, who are afflicted with illnesses of many kind, who mourn, who feel lost and alone and wonder where you are. We raise their names before you in prayer that your healing love may be poured on them. We ask prayers today for Michael, Peter, Tyler, Evelyn, Lynn, Craig, Anne, Agnes, Jeff, Kenneth, Tommy, Thomas, Missy, Julie, Jill, Zane. Lord, we know that you hear and respond to our prayers for these dear ones. Likewise, likewise, gracious God, we shout with joy at the many blessings that have been poured into our lives and into the lives of our family and friends. Our hearts rejoice at the delight they feel. Help us to understand that these blessings are your wondrous gifts of joy for each one of us. We thank you for all these blessings. Help us to bring words of healing and hope to all we meet. Now, let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us all to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Christine. We move into our joy time now, and I would remind you that one of the real blessings for us has been able to uh, share pictures and even selfie videos when you've been game for that. So I would remind you, if you have a picture that you'd like for us to share in our worship service next week, just send those in to Sonia. Try to get those in by Wednesday. That's really very helpful for us. But we thank you for sharing. Uh, we do want to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. We have happy anniversaries coming up this week. So a very special happy anniversary to our couple.
couples who are celebrating anniversaries, and a happy birthday wish to all of our folks who are celebrating birthdays uh, today. We have a couple today. I see Curtis and Kristen, and happy birthday to everybody who will be celebrating a birthday in these coming days. We do have a couple of pictures I want to share. Look at those ducks. Uh, Don Germano uh, sent us a couple of pictures today that we can celebrate uh, just a beautiful nature scene there. And also there are some pink mums that Don shared with us as well. So we are grateful for those beautiful pictures uh, today. I would also remind you that we're continuing to partner with our local fire department here in Highlands. If you have some items you can drop by for hurricane relief, this is an ongoing work. You see the items that are needed there. If you have a question, uh, please just see Christy Lewis. She'll be glad to help you with that. But we thank you for your support of that very important effort. We do continue to have our outdoor worship services. We uh, will have a, had our service at 8.30 this morning in the back parking lot. We'll be out there at 11 o'clock here in just a little bit. We also have our front lawn chats and our morning prayers that are available. Sign-ups are helpful. Uh, so we just encourage you to take a look at our HUMC News or also the website where you can sign up for those outdoor opportunities. It is time for us now to enter into a virtual offering. I want to say thanks to all the many ways you continue to support the life and ministry of Highlands United Methodist Church. Whether you put a check in the mail or you drop it by the front porch where our rocking chairs are and put it in the little black mailbox, or whether you give online. Giving online is really very easy. We'll enter into that online giving portion right now. You can go to our website and you see that you are easily guided to our giving site. So we're going to take a pause right now while Sherry plays for us and and enter into a time of virtual offering right now. Let us pray. God, we are grateful for the bounty of your gifts. We're grateful for the work of the laity in this church. We are grateful for uh, the leaders, the workers, for the support that so many of us experience through the life and ministry of this church and for the faithful laity. And we thank you for all the many ways that this church is supported financially as well. And so we thank you for the gifts that have been given now and in a variety of ways over time. Pray your blessings upon the, the gifts 
given financially for the gifts given in terms of time and talent and presence. We give you thanks for all in your holy name. Amen. We're going to turn to Les now who will give us uh, some guidance and some explanation as we prepare for the anthem this morning. This uh, anthem is by Antonio Vivaldi who was a Baroque musician and it only has four, actually eight words. It's in Latin so let me translate. The first phrase is Laudamus te, we praise thee. Benedicimus te, we bless thee. Adoramus te, we adore thee. Glorificamus te, we glorify thee. This is Laudamus te from Gloria. Instead of one scripture, I have three short scriptures to share. The first is Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. But Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor even now that you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, who gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you are to speak. But Moses said, O oh my Lord, please send someone else. Second reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 7-10. through 10. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, 
Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And the last reading is from Esther, chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter, but you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. Then Esther said in reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf, and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also fast as you do. After that I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Along with writing my own call story, I've been reading call stories in scripture the past few weeks. In preparation for the Discerning My Call workshop that I'll be attending virtually this coming Friday, we were assigned call stories to read and spend some contemplative time with. In addition to the assigned stories of how Samuel, Esther, and Paul were called to ministry by God, I also read the stories of Abraham, Moses, Gideon, Mary, Peter, and Timothy. There are many call stories found in Scripture, and each story is as unique and different as the person being called. The common element of the stories is God does the calling. God calls each biblical character to go out in the world and do what he's calling them to do. God has a specific ministry for each of them to perform that uses their skills, abilities, and gifts to further God's kingdom. How they are called, why they are called, and how they each respond are all unique to each of them. I found parts of my own call story in the scripture stories. Like Moses, I've put up barriers and made many excuses. Like Samuel, I've been blessed with mentors throughout my journey. And like Esther, I have had family and friends who at many times had to point out God's call in my life. But my story is still uniquely mine. My story starts early in my life. There was never a time that church wasn't part of my life. I was baptized as an infant and as a child attended services most Sundays. My first faith memories were in the chapel on the naval base in Rota, Spain, with an Episcopal chaplain. When I was 10, we moved back stateside and started attending Christ Church in Clinton, Maryland. It was the first church I attended that to me was a real church, not just a chapel on base that was shared with all the other denominations. I joined the junior choir, attended my very first Sunday school class, And then when I was in seventh grade, I was confirmed by Bishop John Walker. I became an acolyte and joined the youth group. At the end of my senior year in high school, I was asked to give the sermon for Youth Sunday. As a 17-year-old who hated to speak in front of crowds, I remember being very anxious and nervous. I worked on my sermon entitled, Let Peace Begin With Me, for the last few weeks of school, along with studying for finals and participating in all the graduation events. During the week leading up to Youth Sunday, my dreams were plagued with every worst-case scenario possible, including showing up in my pajamas and passing out in the pulpit. But somehow I managed to make it through without any major issues. And afterwards, during coffee hour, I had a few people ask me where I was planning to go for seminary. I laughed the questions off. But in those few moments, seeds were planted. That summer, I had a few discussions with my mom and my rector about ministry. But in the mid-1980s, there were still very few young women being ordained in the Episcopal Church. 
and I did not want to be a trailblazer. So like Moses, I started throwing up barriers and excuses and saying, not me, God, not me. The next time I felt God calling me was about 13 years later. Mike and I had been married for a while. We had three children under the age of five, and we were living in Duluth, Georgia, and attending Christ Church Episcopal in Norcross. I had just finished the Bible Bethel Leadership Class, which is an intensive two-year program that dives deep into the Bible. It was the first time that I had read every word in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It was also the first time that I devoted time each morning to prayer and scripture reading. A daily habit that has now become so ingrained in me, it has become more of a necessity than my two cups of coffee. Through this study, I not only got an in-depth education on scripture, but for the first time, I was able to see how scripture and God spoke to me and to my life personally. It opened my eyes and my heart to knowing that God was not only working in my life, but through my life. Because of that intensive study of the Bible, along with a continued feeling of a call from God, I enrolled in Education for Ministry, a distance learning certificate program in theological education offered by the University of the South. Somehow, with three kids under the age of 10, all their activities, a preschool teaching job, and Mike traveling for work every week, I managed to complete the four years of study, which includes a vocational discernment piece as one of its five core practices. I had many discussions about the formal discernment process with our assistant rector at the time, but I always used the chaos that was our life with young children to yet again say, not me, not now, God. After moving here to Highlands in 2005 and attending the Episcopal Church for a while, we made our way down Main Street and started attending here at HUMC. As we attended the 909 service, got involved in the life of the church, became professing members, and started volunteering with the youth and children programs, I once again had that feeling of a constant calling nagging at me. When the Director of Children and Youth Ministries position came open at the end of 2017, after much prayer and discussion with Mike, Jennifer, and Randy, I took a leap and applied. After many years of making excuses, saying not me, not now, and putting God off, I was finally entering a field of ministry. I've had many opportunities to step outside of my youth and children box during the past three years. I've grown not only in my skills, abilities, and gifts, but also in my faith. I found myself not not only saying yes to opportunities, like giving sermons, visiting parishioners, assisting in worship, and representing the church and the community, but thoroughly enjoying these parts of ministry, which were not in my original job description. Even with all my current duties, responsibilities, and work as Director of Children and Youth, I still feel I'm being called to be more, to do more, and to minister more within the church. During the spring months, a spring when everything was canceled, and I found myself with a little more time to myself, more time each day for devotion, prayer, and to just be still and hear God's voice within my heart, I finally found myself saying, Here I am, Lord. Speak, for your servant is listening. I found myself out of excuses, out of barriers, and ready to finally answer God's true call for my life. Over the last year or so, Randy and I have had a few discussions about discerning and answering my call. And in July, we sat down together and discussed the discernment journey to being certified as a local pastor. I started on that journey in September. I filled out lots of paperwork for the conference, met with our district superintendent, and have been prepping for the discernment workshop this week. I still have mentor group meetings, SPRC meetings, charge conference, and eventually a meeting with the district committee on ordained ministry on this journey. I don't know where this journey will take me. The discernment process I have learned is a journey that never ends. I do know that for the first time in my adult life, I'm really listening to what God is calling me to do. 
My eyes and hearts are open to wherever the journey takes me, and I'm at peace and looking forward to it. I'm excited to be expanding my ministry and pray that on this journey, I will be able to live fully into Jesus' commission in Matthew's gospel, to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that Jesus commanded us. I have many people who have walked alongside me already on this long journey, family, friends, and clergy, who have listened to me, guided me, loved me, and most importantly, prayed for me. This morning, I ask that each of you keep me in your daily prayers as this journey continues. This past summer, I came across a prayer which I have continually used as I have gone through the discernment process. Would you please pray with me now? O oh Lord, my Heavenly Father, I praise your holy name. I pray for your will to be done in my life and in this world, for your way to rule here on earth as it does in heaven. I am not in control, Lord. You are. Even though that's often hard for me to admit and accept, I'm reali realizing what comes next into your hands, O oh Lord, and trusting you fully. I want you to step into whatever path you lay before me, even when it looks different from what I thought I wanted. For I know you have bigger plans for my life, so I submit my life to your will. I will trust and obey you with an eager and joyful heart. Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now will you join us at home with the closing hymn, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. 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 No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Go with me, still I will follow. Soon I go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to. Follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Thank you for joining us in worship on this Laity Sunday. And I echo Christine's uh, comments at the close of her message today. Let us keep her in our prayers as she moves forward through the candidacy process and continuing to discern God's call uh, that uh, God has placed upon her life. And we celebrate Christine, and, and we give thanks to God for her ministry among us, and we will continue to work to be uh, support for her throughout this journey. We're excited for you, Christine, and we were blessed by your sharing today. I invite you to join with us now as we sing together, Let There Be Peace on Earth, and let it begin with me.
Thank you for joining us in worship this morning. We hope that you have a blessed week. If you are joining us live or at some other time of the week, again, we are uh, honored that you have chosen this time to join us as we have sought to worship God in spirit and in truth. Would you receive now this benediction? May you go forth in peace and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Thank <laughs> you.